Hello once again model car builders welcome back to another Monster Hobbies model car garage tips and tech video. Today we are going to be looking at building one of the amazing model car engines that's out there of course from the Trophy Series Ford lineup which allows you to take one motor from one model car kit and put it into a different model car kit because of course all the engine mountings and the size of the engine and transmission and everything all match across a whole group of model kits. So today we are looking at the amazing optional engine from AMT's 1940 Ford Coupe. Now this of course is 1986 edition. Round 2 has re-released this and actually going all the way back to the early 1960s when this model kit came out there's been numerous 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 releases for this thing. So you could build this engine either stock with the flathead Ford 85 horsepower or with this optional engine we're going to be looking at today which is the Buick Nailhead which you can build as a tricarb uh, 401 Buick Nailhead for the custom or you can build it with a gigantic blower for drag racing drag racing drag racing Sunday 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 <laughs> all right at Motor City no, we're going to be uh, taking a look at how to do that. So, unfortunately, Danny the dog couldn't be with us in this particular video. He is not here. <laughs> but anyway, he says hello to everybody, and he will be back in future videos. So, without further ado, uh, let's go down to the bench, and I will show you how to build both versions, the custom and the drag racing version of the famous Buick 401 Nailhead from 1960, yeah! Before we begin here, I just thought I'd give you a little bit of a history on the 1960 Buick Nailhead motor and where it actually came from. So, a very long time ago, actually back in like 1961 to 62 era, AMT Ertl came out with a series of Ford model cars ranging from 1932 until about 1930 or 1940 actually and they were all part of the original trophy series and the thing that made this unique is that the engines in these kits the stock engines and the custom engines and everything all had the same mounting points at the same distance and they all had little stubby transmissions and the idea of these kits were that the engines were interchangeable between cars. So therefore you could take the engine out of the 32 Ford Sports Roadster and put it into the 1940 Ford Coupe or the 36 or the 34 pickup truck or any of the Fords that were of that era. And interestingly enough, the 1953 Studebaker has a 392 Chrysler Hemi that will also fit into these kits and it seems to be one of the only offshoots outside of this trophy series that is able to do it. So our engine tonight that we're going to be looking at is the Buick Nailhead. And these are the actual original instructions. I did have a customer that had a box full of these that just donated them to the store. So now I want to actually use these instructions because they were the first of this trophy series and explain to you guys exactly how and why the Buick Nailhead is included in the 40 Ford Coupe kit. Now one thing that is interesting with this uh, universal engine mounts is that it also worked for the stock the stock engines that came with the original car. So if you want to build like a early 1940s style or like 1948 early 50s style hot rod you could actually take the Ford motor out of here the original V8 Ford flathead and you could drop it into your 32 Ford coupe which would update that engine because of course the old flathead had more horsepower by the time 1940 rolled around than it did in 32 so just keep that part in mind. Alright, so what it says in here is talking about, you know, you got your three panels here. So this is the original one that came out in 1940. And keep in mind that um, 
these kits originally came out around 1960-62. So it says here on the custom street coupe. Today, some 20 years later, the 1940 Ford affectionately tabbed uh, just the 40 remains one of the most sought after early model Fords. Okay, so it talks about this little jewel and da 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 da. Okay, now check this out. The coupe in the kit is equipped with a 1960, so that would have been a new motor for the time period, 401 cubic inch Buick. Uh, Buick engine, triple carbs, exhaust headers, lake pipes, and a floor shift. Okay, and then it talks about the body and all that. So now when you get down here into the competition coupe, it says the stock 1960 Buick mill has been bored uh, 0.060 over. That means they drilled out the cylinder heads, or the, the cylinders themselves, and they added in bigger pistons. Okay, 060 over. Fitted with a Hillborn fuel injection and a chain-driven GMC 6-71 blower. It also features a magneto ignition, open lake plugs, full roll bar, and 8-inch drag slicks. Okay, so here they've replaced the flathead Ford motor that came with the car originally with a right out of a 1960 Buick with the 401 and the tricarbs. And then the competition coupe, they rip off the tricarbs and throw on the big blower and everything else. So, in fact, there's actually two ways out of this kit to build that Buick. So, let's take a look at the first way. Now, it is rather interesting the way that AMT, back on the original instruction sheet, started this motor off. So you've got the right and left halves of the Buick 401, the cylinder heads glue on, and then you've got your valve covers up top and your manifold there. All right, so that was the generic way to glue that motor together. So now we get into the actual custom street coupe. Now this would be the custom version of the car, of course, obviously. But now note what they've done here in the engine. They have this belt and generator here which glues into the front there's no bracket for the alternate or the generator sticking way up in midair so you would need to make one by just bending some sheet styrene around the side here and attaching it you got the triple carbs going in there and then you've got these exhaust headers that snake up under the frame and then glue into the sides just under the valve covers or sorry yeah the cylinder head here now next up we get into the competition coupe version of the car and here we have the tricarbs replaced with this big blower and then you've got the blower drive which is this shroud here there'd be a chain inside and that would connect to the bottom here uh, this part gets hidden and then the top glo glues onto the blower and we've got the same exhaust headers that snake up in between the frame and glue in once the engine is inserted now there's two sources for the 1960 Buick nailhead motor. One is in the 1940 Ford Coupe, which we saw the instructions for, and the other is for the 1940 Ford Sedan Delivery, which is a sister kit to the 40 Ford. They're based on the same molds, except the body is different, of course, and some of the interior panels. So anyway, you get two complete motors in these kits. One is the Buick Nailhead from 1960 and the other is the original Ford Flathead. Now the way to tell the difference is that the Nailhead has a magneto molded onto it and the Ford Flathead actually has the distributor which is molded up front as well as the exhaust manifolds and this single exhaust connector piece that comes across and leads off to the single exhaust pipe. So this parts tree here has a combination of the Ford flathead components as well as the Buick nailhead components and of course license plates and other things. Now this is the air cleaner for the flathead and these are the pulleys for the flathead. This is the fan for the flathead motor 
and these are the cylinder heads and ex uh, water pipes for the flathead motor. So these pieces here are the ones we want to clip out. These are the cylinder heads for the nail head Buick. And this, if we turn this tree over, is the intake manifold for the nail head Buick. So we want to clip these parts out and set them to the side. Now our fan belt and generator for our Buick nail head is actually on this parts tree with the wishbone for the front suspension. Now next up we have the top and bottom of our blower for this engine for the drag racing version of it, competition version. Uh, now you'll notice there is a lot of flash on here. This is sort of a bear cat to deal with. Although, with a little bit of patience and care, you can actually sculpt this into a very nice scoop, which is what I'll attempt to do in this build-up. Alright, so now we're going to get into our chrome components here. And now these here are your tricarbs. This would be your blower. And there is that chain cover there. And here's our Buick nail head valve covers, all nicely chromed up, as well as our exhaust manifolds and exhaust pipes. So now what we'll do is we'll just take our side cutters here and carefully clip out these nice Buick nail head cylinder heads. Now the reason why they call this thing the nail head is just with the bolts and the way that the spark plugs stick out like nails kind of hammered into the engine I'll put that way down there <laughs> okay and then here goes the other one and that's there and then of course we have our intake manifold which I'll just clip out here and I'll have to get in with the hobby knife and just take off this piece that I cut out here because as you can see it of course is just sort of sticking right out there on our manifold. Okay so here's the components cut out for a basic Buick nail head and I've also included the pulleys and the generator here for our tricarb edition. I'm gonna build, I've actually got enough of these motors that I can build both versions, the blower and uh, the tricarb version of this kit. So stay tuned and I'll show you both ways. I thought I'd start by building our engine block here with the right and left hand sides. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of nice crisp detail on here, but when we flip them over, you will see that the side with the magneto has holes for alignment here and the side without has pins. So the idea here from AMT is that when you put these together, the two halves, the uh, pins should go into those holes and the whole thing should line up nice and even. But I find that on some of these releases, they've been through that mold process so many times that the alignment pins and everything get a little out of alignment. And actually, there's a prime example. You can see that this is hopped down a little bit. So you get quite a lot of seam line going on here. Unless I've just sort of missed the locator portion. Well, at any rate, what I like to do is actually take the hobby knife and cut off these location pins because they can tend to be, you know, in the way too much. So I've got my number 16 hobby blade and we'll just, just try to push the location tab off. very carefully here. <laughs> there we go. Let's fire it out, not into my hand. Okay, so it's making you guys nervous. Sorry for that. You should always push your hobby knife away from your fingers. Okay, so there only appeared to be two location tabs on there. 
So what we'll do is we'll take our block of sandpaper here. Just going to carefully flip this over. You want to tilt it up where you can see what's going on. And I'm just going to carefully rub the engine block against the sandpaper here. Just to help smooth it out. This is uh, basic stuff actually. So I'm going to keep it up here away from the magneto. Just move this side carefully. We're not trying to obliterate it here, but we are trying to get this as a nice flat surface. Now without the locator pins, you've got a lot of room to move this engine block back and forth or up and down, however you see fit. So what I'll do is I'm going to take our tester's liquid glue here out of our toolbox, and this is the stuff here. And uh, what I'll do is I'll pull the cap off and I'm going to go around here. And then I'm going to take my engine block, put it on, and just move it, move it around while the liquid glue starts to tack up until this becomes nice and even. All right, so now I've got the two halves of the engine block glued together. And uh, there is a little bit of a uh, sort of a hop there. But my main concern was to try to get these holes to line up perfectly. And of course, the <laughs> oval style hole at the back of the transmission here to line up perfectly and be a perfect circle in there. So the other thing I was watching as I was moving the two halves of the engine block around was to see if they were, you know, going left and right, lining up end to end here, as well as this way up and down to make sure that the holes lined up perfectly. So now with the holes lined up perfectly, I can take these two pins on our pulley assembly and they should line up perfectly into there, which, yes, everything is looking pretty good. Sorry for the gray plastic and the way the lights are going on it, but you can see that this will eventually line up once we do a lit little bit of uh, sanding on the ends of the pulleys and everything, or the water pump, I should say. And uh, that will have to wait as our glue dries up here. All right, so I let a little time pass here so that the glue would dry. Just so I can now show you the seam line here. You can kind of catch it in the light there. And there, and as you see, the seam line is going right up the engine pan, up the front, around, over the uh, magneto here, and then off to the end. Or I guess it's a distributor anyway. So what we want to do is just you can take your hobby knife and scrape the seam off, trying not to get it too close up to the camera so it goes blurry. <laughs> All right, I've also got my hobby file here. Let's see there, there you go. And uh, you can do a little filing just to get this down. Trying not to make this barrel shape, but actually flat. You can also cross sand, so you're going to go like in one direction here, and then change to go this way. And that should level the top out. So I'm just going to test this with our um, intake manifold. See this little hole here, there should fit on that little pin there and it does it seems to fit fairly nice fairly flat down there on the top of the engine so then what i'll do is i'm going to use the file and go over the oil pan here you know and i'll just go up there and there and around here you always want to look to make sure that you're not filing off something important. And you can actually even use sandpaper here if you don't have any files. Just to uh, sand this nice and flat here. 
and then that should fit nicely up against our pulleys which of course it does okay so I'm going to scrape those down and then we'll oh can also get into cleaning up the top of the cylinder heads here just make sure those are flat going out of focus <laughs> Okay, so making sure those are flat so that these can fit in oh, like that. There we go. So those can fit in there like that. And that will oops, start to get our basic gray plastic engine together. The beginnings of our 401 Buick nail head. Okay, here's our engine block after I sanded the seam line, and I also I switched my sandpaper from some very coarse stuff to some pretty fine sandpaper here. This one I've used a few too many times, but it does give a smooth result, which should be better for when we paint this thing, because of course a smoother result will give us less scratches on our uh, oil pan and whatnot. So now we want to take a look at doing our cylinder heads and uh, I don't know if the camera's picking it up too much but there is a little bump there from where we removed it from the parts tree which of course this will affect the fit of the valve covers so we just want to sand this out pretty flat and then try to get it here Okay, and there is one on the bottom here, not on this one per se, but on the other one, of course. It's got one there and one there, so we can just sand those out again too. So I'll do that, and oh, the other thing is to go along the edges here with your hobby blade. Just scrape along, and uh, then I will do these. And then we can we can glue these on to our cylinder heads here using our uh, testers liquid glue, which is right there. <laughs> Pop off the cap, go along here and here, and I'll glue on those cylinder heads. Then we'll look at doing up the intake manifold. All right, so here is our engine now with the cylinder heads glued on. And again, you can see how the spark plugs stick out. And I think this is why they called it the nail head, because it looks like nails are sticking out. You know, okay, so as you can also see, the top of the engine is flat straight across. So uh, now I glued these on and I'm going to just put this out of the way for now and let that glue dry. And now we're going to look at our intake manifold here. And as you can see, there is quite a bit of sprue sticking out here in this area. And that is because that's where it was attached to the parts tree. Now, you could take your knife and, like, push this in and try to carve it out. Or you can use your half round file here, or even a round file. And just, oh, let's see. Maybe I can do it this way. <laughs> okay, so you just carefully keep going at this. But make sure your file doesn't hit these ends here and make this a whole new shape. So what I'll do is I will file this down. But I'm going to do that off camera for a minute. Because what I want to point out here, if you can see it, I'm still getting adjusted to this overhead camera mount here, so bear with me. Maybe you can see it there, I don't know. There's two little bumps here. Those are mold release marks. And, of course, we can get rid of it. This is our number 16 hobby blade. So, in order to get these out of here, just scrape like that. 
and then flip it over go till this flattens out and there they're gone so now we got quite a nice little manifold here um, for our tricarbs, three carburetors. So one, two, three. These would be three two-barrel carburetors on the real car. And uh, this is the option for 1961 or 60, whichever it said. I think it said 60. 1960 Buick Nailhead. So I'm just sort of scraping out the flash out of here. Let's go along. Sing our song. And there, that's what we want to do. Get rid of all the flash out of here. So that the top of our intake, or the sides of our intake man manifold are nice and smooth. Without that sharp edge in there. So I'm going to work on this little bit off camera, but here's how it would be on the engine. See already we're starting to shape up here. So what I will do also off camera is just add a little glue into here so that I can cement the manifold on. And our final bit of gray plastic is of course our belt and generator. Well. There it is there. And uh, I will come back with that, clean it up, and we can put her there. <laughs> okay, and as promised, here is our engine with that manifold now glued in place. Uh, when I glued it down, I had to turn it a little bit this way at the top because it was kind of going this way, and I figured that the uh, valve covers would have a problem getting in there. So anyway, I've got it pretty straight. There's the valve covers there, which we're not going to put on until we get this engine painted. And that's a whole other step on its own. So anyway, we are at our final stage here. And this is our fan belt and pulley system. Now, I don't know if you can see this too well. Uh, there are mold buttons there, there. And there's another one here. Okay, there, see? And there is a lot of flash on this. It's probably one of the, the worst pieces of this whole engine. But it's not hard to fix. So we can just take our hobby knife, do a little adzing on here, which is just a fancy term for scraping. So now we're starting to get a bit better. Of course, go around the top. All right, so anyway, uh, the way to get these guys out is to use your file and just give her a little filing. You know, you can even cross file a bit until that's nice and flat. And then uh, do the same for the others. There's a little mold uh, or a part of the sprue tree right there sticking off that belt as well. So, of course, you want to be careful here. You can see everything you're doing. But basically round it, you know, the same curve as that pulley until it all starts to go away. And then you should have something smooth there. Just like that. All right, so I'm going to do this again off camera. Whoa, <laughs> knife doing a dance on me. So I'm going to remove these, 
And oh yeah, you also have to go in here, which you can do with your hobby knife, just like that. Get around in there, clean it all up, and then... Now, of course, I won't be able to glue this to the motor, because this is all black, and the pulleys are gloss black. The belt is flat black. Pulleys, generator, everything else, gloss black. But anyway, once it's all done... Oops. That will be our engine there. Okay, so now I have the fan belt and generator all done. And I wanted to point out something. You can sort of see it here. There's like a bump off the edge of this. Um, I wouldn't file that flat or sandpaper it flat because I think that's actually supposed to be the positive and negative input leads that come off the generator. Um, not 100% sure on that, but better safe than sorry. So, with that in mind, I actually have two of these engines built. One from a previous model kit that I didn't finish yet. So, that's actually a good thing. Because what I want to do is, I'm going to build one motor with the tricarb set up. And I'm going to build the other one with the big blower set up, so that you guys can see the difference between the two styles of Buick 409. Here we have our 1960 Buick nail head after I've painted it with Model Master Custom Spray Enamel 50s Aqua. Now this is the closest that I could actually find to what the paint color of the Buick motor was. I'm getting a lot of glare from my uh, lights over there. However, you can see that it is nice and uniform all the way around, including on the ends here. <laughs> You see I've used one of those bamboo skewer sticks, like I'm holding here, the red one, just to put in the end of the bell housing of our transmission there, actually our gearbox, in that little hole just to support it. Now next I'll need to paint the starter motor, and I'm going to use the Citadel Games Workshop Abaden Black, just to put the black in there. We also have our magneto up here, which I do believe should be chrome. Spark plugs. And what else do we have? I uh, There's the oil filter. And I do believe there's a little coil underneath here. Yeah, on the oil pan, which is interesting. Um, and then after, I need to paint my fan belts and the generator. So I will do that off camera. And then show you what we need to do for our chrome to get our chrome to stick to this nice engine block. Here we have our chrome parts that we're going to need for both our custom and our drag racing Buick nail head. So what we have here is a tricarb setup with the little air cleaners on the top. We have our blower assembly, the blower belt pulley drive, as well as our valve covers and our big exhaust manifolds. So what we will do is we'll take our Zuron cutters here and we will clip out all the pieces that we're going to need. Uh, so let's start right here. That's pretty easy, I hope. Okay. So, got our manifolds. There's one. And the other... There we go. Oh, valve covers. I think what we'll do is we'll use our number 16 hobby blade and just push down here. And here. Whoa! Jumping valve covers. <laughs> And then our carburetors, which we can get again with our cutters. And just push that off. And then our blower drive assembly. And our blower. Okay, that's everything off the parts tree. Just put that over there.
there we go. So that should be all our chrome components now. And we are going to have to clean up our chrome with our hobby blade and you know, take off where it was attached to the parts tree, you know, like so. And then what we want to do is take some Model Master paint. This is our chrome, and uh, I know it's rubbed off. <laughs> but after you clean up your parts, you're going to want to take your chrome paint and take your brush here and just dip it in the paint and then go around and find all the spots that are bare plastic and carefully paint them with the chrome paint for a bit of touch-up and then uh, actually you want to scrape the chrome prior to painting that let's say you want to scrape the chrome plating off where it's going to go into our engine here so it will make uh, plastic to plastic contact of course we're going to also have to paint or sorry scrape the paint off the top of our cylinder heads here and then a little bit on our intake as well as for our carburetors that's so that when we push the carburetors in we can glue them down make it all nice and proper for a good proper glue bond between the two plastic items because plastic will not or the plastic glue will not glue paint to paint so or chrome plating to paint so that's what we need to do just clean up all these chrome components here we have our buick nail head with the valve covers just sitting on loosely and uh, what we want to do is scrape the paint off of where they're going to be sitting so if i just take one off and turn it over you can see that i've scraped off the chrome plating all along the bottom that's going to be our contact surface for the valve cover itself. And we have to get rid of the paint on the cylinder head where it's going to be coming in contact. So what I've done is where I've cut it off the tree and scraped the uh, bit of the chrome that's missing, I'm going to put it on the outside of the engine so that I can touch it up from the outside instead of trying to reach through the top down this way. So I just take my number 11 hobby blade and with the valve cover on, being careful, I am going to run the blade just along the valve cover itself. That's so that I don't take off this bit of uh, turquoise paint in here, or teal I guess it is. And I'm left with a little line that I can follow. So uh, then I can make another line just along the edge here. This is so that I don't chip the paint, you know, off the edge. So I've got a little template there. And I should be able to... No, maybe not. <laughs> well, I'll take my number 16 hobby blade, which allows me to get in a little flatter. And from that line that I carved, I will move it in toward the spark plugs until I clean off that edge, get back to paint. And then I've got something to glue the valve covers onto. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other valve cover. And I can do it with the air cleaners as well. Placing them on. Uh, look at the instructions because the air cleaners have a little round spot at the front. Whoa, and a square edge at the back. And I forget which way they go for now. Uh, blower with the blower, I've scraped off the pins on the bottom so that, uh, oh, you can drill the holes in here too with your drill. Make sure you got a drill that's the same size just to knock off the paint inside. And then uh, there you can sit your blower on like that. And with the front belts. Now I've scraped off on the point there. I've scraped in the hole here and the two little pins got some of the chrome scraped off. I took my uh, number 16 hobby blade and I went around in here and I'll have to do the same on that bottom one. And then this should be able to fit into the holes when I glue it. 
just like that. And then I've got to make sure that the uh, blower is sitting straight up and down and not off to an angle. But that's easily adjustable. And then that's what the uh, blower assembly would look like. So here's the top of those cylinder heads after I scraped the paint off. And I also took my drill here and I drilled those holes that are sitting on the cylinder heads just so that the valve covers would have no problems fitting in. One thing I will recommend is after you scrape the chrome, this chrome tended to explode all over the place. So wash your chrome first before you start putting it on your engine because I noticed I started to get some little chrome flakes sticking into the paint. So we really don't want that. And then looking at the carburetors, I found in the instructions that the square part actually goes forward. So just be sure that if you're doing the tricarb version, that you have your carburetors with the square part sticking forward. Otherwise, your carbs are in reverse. Oh, and the same way we scraped off the chrome little points is going to be the same uh, spots you want to scrape off on the regular fan belt and pulley or uh, and generators. So that's where you want to clean those off so that they all glue in and glue solid plastic to plastic contact, melting perfectly for the best grip that you can ever get. Here's our tricarb version of the Buick 401 nail head. I know I accidentally said 409 in the video. It's a 401 cubic inch motor. I do have it sitting on the little engine stand that came in the 32 Ford, the Fiaton. Uh, now, as you can see, the exhaust manifolds and pipes stick way out here. I glued them on this block. It does say in the instructions to glue the engine in first and everything, and then slip up the manifolds through the bottom and glue them onto the sides that way so that these bits will uh, go into our frame. But anyway, you can see the nice 50s aqua on here in color. Painted the magneto silver. Painted the spark plugs white along the side. Our generator and fan belt is, of course, flat black. I could paint this gloss black up here. It would be a little more accurate, but whatever. <laughs> I just got to be careful with this, but if you can look at the side view, you can get a better profile of our engine. See the white oil filter underneath by the pan. I did add the little bolts onto the fan belt. And uh, on this side, we got our black generator sitting just right here. So again you can see how nice this engine looks once you get it all together. I know it's going a little out of focus so I'll try to get some better shots here as single photos and then I can show you the drag racing Buick nail head with the blower after this. Here we have the drag racing version of our Buick nail head. And actually, there's two ways to build this. In the original instruction sheet from 1960, this was the way the motor was with the injector throttle bodies, the two of them, just sitting up open with the uh, tops exposed just like this. And then later, as this kit progressed in its life, they added in this, which is a scoop for the uh, intakes, which makes the engine a lot taller and a lot more menacing looking than just the throttle body sticking up in the open air like that. Now, if we just take our motor and turn it on its side again, like we did with the stock ver or custom version, pardon me, you will notice that I painted it exactly the same, just so that you could see how the blower and the blower belt uh, pulleys and shroud here look on the engine and again I don't know if this will stick on there of course not <laughs> but uh, there's the blower on the top so you kind of get the idea of what this would look like again here from the front you get that nice cover with all the bolts and the fins in there and again 
Very nicely done, goes together quite well. Not a problem with this engine. One thing I did on the exhaust ends, so I actually took my number 16 hobby drill, which is this one right here. And I went on the end of the exhaust pipes and I drilled in just a little bit, maybe about that far. And then I took a black paint on my tiny brush and dropped it in the ends, just so these look more like open exhaust pipes rather than just blanks sticking out there. But again, basically three ways to build the engine. The only difference is, of course, adding in this little blower on the top. Or sorry, our uh, scoop, I guess. Just like that. Here we have our two versions of the Buick Nailhead all complete. And which one would you choose to drop into your hot rod? The custom with the tricarbs or the drag race one with the giant blower? And if you were to use this motor, would you leave this scoop on or off? Let us know down in the comment section below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that engine build as I got to show you the 1960 Buick nail head that you can, of course, find in the AMT 1940 Ford Businessman Coupe as the optional engine for both or, sorry, custom and drag. So let me know how you've built this engine. Did you build the tricarb version or did you build the nail head with the gigantic blower on the top? What model kits did you put it in? Did you put it in the coupe? Did you put it in maybe the sedan? Did you put it in a 36 Ford? That'd be cool to see, 36 Ford with that big blower sticking out there in the nail head. Or maybe even the 34 Ford pickup truck or 32 Roadster or something like that. Let us know down in the comments below how you did it. And hey, before we go, I noticed something in my old car magazine collection. So this AMT, whoever built this model, did it for a box in 1986. But I found this Rod Action magazine from 1981 where uh, they did this cover car, which is an Australian 1940 Ford. Somebody had customized. And if you look, they're almost like the same car. <laughs> so I wonder if the AMT guy was inspired by that magazine when he built his model for the box top. So let us know down in the comments below how you used that engine, what you used it in, and all that great stuff. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. And until next time, everybody, happy model building. Well, I think that brings another great video to a close. It was real fun making it, and I hope you all learned something from it. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave those down in the descriptions below. And if you enjoyed watching these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound the notification button down below so that every time I make a new video, you are the first ones to see it. If you'd like to shop with us at Monster Hobbies, don't forget to check out our web address, www.monster-hobbies.ca. Again, I'll leave it in the description below. If you want to support us on Patreon, because, well, YouTube is, it we are monetized. YouTube does pay us, but it's sort of up and down based on views. If you'd like to support us with something a little more steady, visit our Patreon account, like these great people here have done. Thank you all for your support over on Patreon. It's uh, pretty easy. 
I'll leave the link for that in the description below as well. Again, if you want to share some great stuff with us, do it on our Facebook page. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.